G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Well, I did forget to tell you what I picked up from my mate's computer business a couple of days ago. And I thought, while I've got time now, I'll do it. I got another one. Another one of these D-Link IP-based web cameras. The only difference between this one and the one we tore down, what, two months ago, is this one, as you can see, has four infrared LEDs around it. It's a day-night camera. Full colour during the day and infrared at night, which means at night cats love it because it's like daylight to them. Um, this one is mildly more prob problematic than the one we tore down. Now, the one we tore down, as you know, had nothing. Red light of death is what I've been told it's called. The way this works is red light is fail. Green light or green flashing means it's trying to work. The only difference between this one is that it goes from red to green. The My D-Link app and the web interface knows it's there. But as soon as you go to log in, whether it be with the default password or the username and password associated with your My D-Link account, you get nothing. So whilst this one's in slightly better state than the one we tore down, I've been asked if I can find a way of getting it back up and running. Funnily enough, it's actually only 18 months, two years old. So that's two that my friends lost in the space of a bit under two years. So I've got an Ethernet cable. I've got a PowerPoint. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. All right, I've got an Ethernet lead. Power lead up. Hang on. The reason I'm doing it this way is the camera and the phone's dead again. Unsurprising. Alright, now the reset procedure for these is basically the same as the one we tore down. Five seconds on the reset button, and that sets it back to factory default. So let's see what this does. Now, if it's got the red light of death, it means it's no good and we'll pull it to pieces again. Not looking good, is it? Hang on. Where's that reset button? Where is it? Can I get the bloody reset? I think this one's knackered. Hang on a minute. Hmm. It's got the red light of death. Which might mean it ends up being a uh, a tear down again. Uh, I'll do an advanced IP scan and uh, see what happens. Well, I've got an IP address but it's not letting me in. Now I've reset it back to factory default for those that are interested. You, um, the reset button is just above that blue light. But unfortunately this one, it got 192.168.1.47. So it's got an IP address, but I can't get into it. So I think it's time we do a teardown on this one then. It's pretty much stuffed. But um, we'll tear it down and have a look. All right, so I've got that shocking, super sticky security tape off, you know, the warranty void if removed. We're just going to forcefully get into this. If I can remember how to get into it. Got into the other one, I just can't remember how to get into these. I suppose the upside with these is also they're, they're inexpensive, so they are just a throwaway item. When they do pack up, you just go and um, you know, get a new one. Hang on, let me get into this. All right, well, I've got, the, got that much of it off. They're not really... There we go. That's done it. All righty. So we're in again. So, again, we have our... 
camera right here. Now this one's also got Wi-Fi as well, so this one can be done wireless. And then we've got our circuit board for our four infrared LEDs. So let's at least get the infrared plug off. Right, so there's our camera. As I said, it's full color daylight and infrared at night. It's a dual dual mode camera. The other one we tore down was not. Okay, remember that one was either full color day or nothing at night unless there was an infrared source near it. I think that's what it was. And then just below that, you can probably just see it, if I bring it up close enough to the camera, you can just see the little um, cream looking thing underneath that uh, that the IR, infrared, uh, light dependent resistor, the LDR, uh, there's the uh, red and green LED. So, now what we, I guess what we've got to do is see, I, I assume this will be very much like the other one we pulled down. Um, although I don't remember the other one having that on it. Um, it's possible that all the, well actually it probably is highly likely, I should say, that all these were mass manufactured and then it was just a case of whether or not you got the infrared option or not. So let's try and see if we can't get the protective cover off. There we go. That was easy. That was a lot easier than the other one we pulled down. Okay, so we've got our. What's that again? That's our rail link chip, and possibly uh, which will be obviously our um, Wi-Fi and Ethernet connection. Then we've got our wind band chip, wind bond chip, sorry, which the other one did not have, I don't believe. Actually, we've got another one there because there, there's another wind bond chip there. So one will be the PROM, uh, that's our IO controller, DC in and megabit NIC. Really not a lot to them. When you actually think about it, there's almost nothing to them, really. So, and there's that. Now, let's get on to the, uh, let's go to get on to the infrared. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trash these. I'm actually going to keep that like it is. Because the input voltage for this is, right, so... It's five volts at one and a half amp. Uh, no, not one and a half amps. What is it? One point two amps. So it's five VDC at one point two amps. Meaning, and I'm not. I'd obviously, we've got to make sure that theoretically, these will be around that voltage. Maybe one point two volt. They are only infrared. So let's see if we can get this out without destroying it. Okay, so I'm going to need to find a very small Phillips head screwdriver. Oh, look, yes, I am. All right, so we've got... Uh, what do we got there? We've got six little screws, which are the uh, Precision Jeweler Phillips head screws. So what I'll do is I'll go and find one of my jeweler's screwdrivers and uh, see if I can't get that out. Because actually that'll be very handy for one of my other security cameras around the house. Because what I can do is I think it's also five volts. I think it's feed at one or 1.1 amps. But if I can put a ring of LEDs around it, be really handy for nighttime recording. Because you remember, I've got all that security camera stuff now. So if I can get another camera, because one, I think the camera at the back is not IR. 
it's day, daylight only. So if I can get these to actually work, all right, it means I've got day and night around the camera. And I think the camera's, <coughs> I think the camera is IR compatible, but because it hasn't got a ring of LEDs around it, it can't see at night. So let me go get my jeweler's screwdrivers and uh, we will pull the um, pull the IR out and have a look. All right, and our uh, precision jeweler's screwdrivers. Let's see if we can uh, get this apart and have a look at the infrared board. What my fat fingers, I wouldn't want to be trying to put these screws back in, let me tell you. Oh dear. Oh no, there it is. Oh, they're different sizes. When I did my electronics course years ago, we did a lot of work with um, LDRs and infrared. For those that aren't familiar with LDR, it's what's called light-dependent resistor, but the way you invert it is to put a transistor between the, um, to reverse the polarity of the LDR. See, normally what happens is when there's no light, there's, when the LDR has no light source, it becomes a resistor. When it has a light source, it passes electricity but if you want to have it act so that when it's dark the light comes on you put a transistor like a um, BJT or something between the um, output and the input voltage and that way what happens is, is that you end up having the light dependent resistor when it gets dark you turn the light on all right we've got it all apart now I'm not quite sure what that's for. It's a magnet of some sort, by the looks of it. It is too. It's a magnet. That will be... I'm not sure why. That's a new one, actually. Why would they have a magnet around the camera? I can only assume to... probably to stop the flood the infrared or maybe the Wi-Fi actually it'll probably be for the Wi-Fi all right so there we have four small infrared LEDs I don't even know I can't even read that they're so they're so small I can't even read the details on them the board number is 8CS932IR, infrared, dot 010A1G. You can probably read that up there. So if you've got one of these type of cameras and this has had it, that's the board you've got to get. But uh, that's interesting. That's That's got, you see there, we've got two copper plates. encased in plastic. I'd say it's a metal shielding of some sort. Or it's a capacitor of some sort. That's, yeah, that's a weird one. No, it's a, it's a, some sort of shielding because that, looking through there, all right, so looking through here, you may or may not be able to tell. The camera doesn't really pick it up. There's actually a fine film there. I reckon this is some sort of... Um, I think it's a focus shielding of some sort or a filter shielding. Might be a glare shield. That's, yeah, that's, that's different. So there we go. There's not much really to these little cameras. What do you got? One, two, three components. Not much to it. Okay, so now this is your LDR. This is your light dependent resistor. Okay, so light means it'll let things through. Okay, 
okay? No light means it acts like a big resistor to the point where, you know, your end source, whether it be a light, a motor or something, won't work anymore. And so what you do with these, if you want, um, in the case of, say, a security light, you would put a transistor in the same circuit as this, so that as the light dims, the voltage coming out of this is reversed, so it actually increases the voltage and turns the light on. Uh, in the case of this one, it would act like a resistor, so basically as the natural light around the camera disappears, come night time, the voltage for the IR LEDs turns on. So there we go. Right, so, total teardown now. Um, these are all replaceable components. Just getting into this is um, it's tedious. But when you think about it, they're reasonably cheap. So, as I've said before, you know, you can replace them pretty easily, either from D-Link or eBay or whatever. I think these were an eBay special that my friend got for his computer business at the time. But, uh, yeah, another D-Link security camera torn down. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.